Yeah, when you go ahead and drop 40 in the regional final, there's a very good chance you are going to be not just on the all-tournament team, but to become the region's most outstanding player. And that's exactly what Zach Eady was. Last Purdue player to do it, Carson Edwards in 2019. Prior to him, nobody had been the MOP of a regional since Joe Barry Carroll all the way back in 1980. Of course, JBC, one of Trent Meacham's all-time favorite players, as he joins us on this edition of Big Ten Today. We'll touch on Zach Eady a little bit more with Robbie Hummel coming up later in the show as well. But I want to get your thoughts on the big fella because it seems like Trent, just when we think he's hit his ceiling, he does something to show us he's even better than we thought. Well, in, in every category that I look at, at him as a player, his conditioning, playing 39 minutes, his effectiveness around the hoop, his ability to take up space on the defensive end, his positioning, his understanding of the game. But, but Rick, I think the, the most important thing for him right now is his mental edge. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Hmm. He, he's playing with a great a, a fierceness, a, a focus that just not many players have. And you think about maybe it's his, it's his story of development. It's what happened last year. And I feel like a lot of the critics are just adding more fuel to his fire because, man, is he playing with just a, a great amount of emotion, but he's not letting it get the best of him. It's allowing him to just totally just dominate players. doesn't matter what teams are throwing against him. And so you give him a ton of credit. The team obviously plays through him so well. It's been fun to watch his growth, and it's been really fun to watch him perform so well at the most important times on the biggest stage. So you think he's being motivated? Because the criticism out there is that, listen, he's not officiated fairly. The Tennessee fans were all over social media saying, Zach, he's bad for college basketball because we don't know how to officiate a guy like that. He spends too much time in the paint. It's not called the same on one end as it is on the other. You think he's hearing this, listening to this, and is motivated by this? I do, and I think most great competitors will, will pull whatever they can to add more motivation, to fuel them, to get them going one way or another. I mean, look, he, he's done it at such a high level all throughout the course of the season, day after day. Sometimes that can, that can wear on you. There's so much responsibility and pressure on him. And so I think you say, hey, he, I think he's welcoming it, and there's just a fire in his eyes. There's a fierceness that he's playing with that – it's, and it's the right mix, you know, because if it's, if it's overboard, especially at his size, I mean, how he plays, it could, he could easily take some guys out. So he has the right mix. His, his mental approach is right on point. And, I mean, heck, I mean, what he's done, 30 and 16 in those four games in the NCAA tournament, I mean, the most dominant player I've seen. And I don't know how far you have to go back to say, oh, yeah, you know, this was a comparable force in college basketball. Right, been a I long haven't time. seen anyone. So if you're believing in that mindset, then this to me would be the perfect matchup for Edie if he matches up against DJ Burns, who's become one of the stars of this NCAA tournament, because Burns is getting all this love about his game and the way he plays and the joy in which he plays and that he's so unique. If you believe that Edie is feeding off all this criticism and people maybe not giving him the credit that he deserves, then this has to be the perfect setup for the big fella. Well, this will be a fun, it'll, it'll be a really fun matchup. I mean, it, North Carolina State plays through, through Burns, and, and he's a... He's a different type of player, kind of like a Zach Randolph, you know, big body, great footwork, incredibly soft a good touch comparison, around, Zach around, Randolph. Uh, uh, around the rim. He, he is a fun player to watch, and he does play with the joy, and, and it's very different from Zach Eady uh, of his focus, his game face. I don't know if it ever leaves him. And, heck, if I'm Coach Painter, I, I don't care. Now I'll say, as, as much fun as I've had watching DJ Burns run through the ACC tournament, continue dominance in the NCAA tournament, I just – I don't know if this is a fair fight for him. I, I think this game for Purdue, I think – Purdue is a really difficult matchup for NC State. I don't think they're going to be able to play through Burns. It'll be interesting. We'll see if he can have some success against a 7'4", 300-pound Edie. I don't think it's going to happen. Yeah, I think that Kevin Keats, the NC State coach, is smart enough to realize that and smart enough to realize that he has really good athletic guards. And if there's anything that Purdue has struggled with sometimes – it's athletic guards that can get to the rack and also can really test guys defensively. What can Fletcher Lawyer do defensively if, for example, they get DJ Horn set up on Fletcher Lawyer? If I'm NC State, I think I'm focused more on my athletic guards and maybe what they can provide against Purdue's defense. 
I, I would agree. And you look at their guards, Horn, Morcel, those are fifth-year guys. O'Connell's a, a fourth-year guy. This is a very experienced team. They're kind of on this magical run. And can they continue it? You know, we'll see if they do. I, I think for NC State, they're going to try to increase the pressure, get deflections. I think dig down on Zach Eady. DR is a really big athletic guy that can move, that can guard a lot of, a lot of different positions. I think you'll, maybe they'll, they'll try to trap on Zach Eady. It's always interesting to see what do teams do to try to contend with Edie? But I would say on the other end, when I look at Purdue's guards, Fletcher Lawyer, you know, he shot the ball decent, but he's going to the basket. He's putting pressure on defenses. And then Brain Smith, almost 10 points, 10 assists in the NCAA tournament. As good as Zach Edie is, I would almost argue that Brain Smith is the most important player for Purdue. I disagree. <laughs> well, okay. Um, but it, you know, in terms of how he's playing, how he's running the show, if they don't have him, they're in a world of trouble. And yeah, of course, Edie's the most valuable player, their most important piece. But Smith is easy A2. A A2 oh, without Purdue. question. I don't disagree strongly, by the way. <laughs> and allow me to dream here. We've got about 90 seconds because Purdue's a massive favorite on one side of the bracket. UConn's a massive favorite on the other side of the bracket. How good would it be if we see strength versus strength, UConn, Purdue, their big fella Klingon against Edie. Now, the big advantage to me, if that happens, Klingon plays about 22 minutes a game because that's all he can go. Edie goes the route. Well, that's what everyone would love to see, the two best teams. You don't always everyone get that in college it. basketball. You have the story of the repeating for UConn and the story of redemption for Purdue. It would be incredible storylines, the two best teams, and to see two, you know, what I think maybe two lottery picks going at it Underneath the basket, that's not really the case in today's modern game of basketball, but they're showing, hey, you can do it through bigs. I think Edie definitely has the upper edge, but Klingon, man, did he look good against the Illini. Of course, UConn has to get past Alabama first. I see no issues there for the Huskies, do you? Well, the only thing I'd say is Alabama shoots a ton of threes. Almost half their shots are threes. They shoot it really well. Mark Sears is a point guard, is, is a He's phenomenal terrific. player. His splits are like 50, uh, 50, you know, 50, 40, 90. They're, they're that good. So if they're shooting the heck out of the ball, if they make 23s, they made 19, yep. I think, against Purdue, they could give them a run. But I think we're setting up for a great matchup in the championship game, UConn and Purdue. It would be phenomenal. Nate Oates, really good coach, and they just paid him like he is a really good coach. Now one of the highest paid coaches in all of college basketball. So many fascinating stories. Kevin Keats was potentially on the hot seat. Now he's in the final four.